Hi everyone, I'm David Fisher, and this is Presidential Chronicles, a series of books and videos on American history as seen through the lives of the Presidents of the United States. This episode is from the life of William Henry Harrison, and the focus is plantation to medicine to arms. William Henry Harrison is the product of one of the most exclusive elite families in all of the American colonies, hailing from Virginia, dating back the family all the way to 1632. His father, Ben Harrison, had already spent a quarter of a century serving in the Virginia House of Burgesses by the time that William Henry was born, February 9th, 1773. And just a couple of years after that, his father was off to Philadelphia to be representing the colony of Virginia at the first and eventually the second Continental Congress, and he signed his name on the Declaration of Independence. He was raised on the family plantation they called Berkeley. It was in Charles City, Virginia, and Berkeley was badly damaged during the Revolutionary War. The last year of fighting was 1781, and Benedict Arnold, now fighting for the British, actually ran roughshod over this part of Virginia, and Berkeley was one of the plantations, one of the many plantations that suffered as a result. Well, after the war, Harrison now, among the family of the wealthy elites, he had lots of choices. He's 14 years old, and he decided to pursue medicine. In fact, he enrolled at the Hamden City College, where he spent a couple of years there before moving on to the Medical Academy of Southampton County, and then served under the office of Dr. Andrew Leiper in Richmond, Virginia, and or number, stop number four was the Pennsylvania University Medical School in Philadelphia. Four different places, lots of study, but he would never become a doctor. He's the only American president who actually ever went to medical school, but he never became a doctor in part because his father suddenly passed away, 1791, and the estate would no longer pay for his education. So William Henry at a, at a crossroads, he's 18 years old, he's trying to figure out what to do next. And he's soliciting opinions, and one of those came from Richard Henry Lee, a U.S. Senator from Virginia, now serving in the American Congress, and had served with uh, Harrison's father in the Second Continental Congress. In fact, Richard Henry Lee was the one who actually proposed independence on behalf of Virginia. Well, Lee said to Harrison, why don't you think about joining the Army? Now, Harrison's family and friends thought this was a terrible idea. This wasn't a way that uh, Harrison's would go and pursue a career, but he liked the idea. So he signed up and he joined some 80 recruits that were sent off to the Northwest Territory. It's what we call the Midwest today, but it was the Northwest Territory at the time. Uncultivated, mostly unsettled land, just a few communities here and there. This was mainly Indian country and plenty of conflicts on the American frontier between the American settlers and the Indians, and this is what Harrison was walking into in his first job in the Army. He was assigned to Fort Washington, which was in Cincinnati, small town at the time, under General Arthur Sinclair, and Sinclair and his troops had just suffered a pretty bad defeat, so things were not going so well. And it was also a bit of a tough crowd. As Harrison would later recall, he remembered lots of drinking and lots of dueling. In fact, he said, at least four-fifths of my brother officers died from the effects of intoxication. That's what he thought about the drinking side. And as for the duels, he was very much against, as he saw how awful it was, obviously not only for the victim who died in a duel, but also the survivor. Harrison later said, I had the best evidence to believe that in the grave of the fallen duelist was frequently buried the peace and happiness of the survivor. The act which deprived the one of existence and planting a thorn in the bosom of another which would continue to rankle and foster there to the end of his days. He was not a fan of this practice. Well, at the time, President George Washington and his Secretary of War, Henry Knox, were trying to forge better relations with the Indian tribes. They met with a number of the Indian chiefs, treaties were signed, but the problem was largely the American settlers wouldn't abide by these treaties. They continued to invade, invade different uh, Indian land holdings. Eventually, the Indians would get sick of it. They would attack. Then the Americans would come out with full-flown militia, defeat the Indians, and the cycle would repeat often with the Americans taking a bunch of land in return. Well, that cycle was kicking up again here in the 1790s in the second term of the Washington administration, and the administration was at the point where it could no longer try to concil conciliate the Indians. It felt it needed to quash what was going on, and Washington called upon Major General Mad Anthony Wayne, one of his generals from the Revolutionary War, to come back in, put an army together, and put this to a stop. Well, this turned out to be pretty good for William Henry Harrison, as Harrison was promoted to the rank of lieutenant and made aide-de-camp 
to wane. In fact, he was in the, in the thick of it when it came to battles. Harrison's first battle took place in 1794. He's only 21 years old. He's a lieutenant been taking place in Ohio, and his principal job was to be by Wayne's side, but take and to send and receive orders, often in the heat of the battle. In this particular case, Wayne would later say that Harrison rendered the most essential services by communicating his orders in every direction and by his bravery in exciting the troops to press for victory. And victories were coming to the American military. The ultimate battle was the Battle of Fallen Timbers. This is August of 1794, where General Wayne and his regulars, plus a thousand local militia, had the decisive victory, led to a truce followed by the Treaty of Greenville. In, in return, once again, it was sort of minor annuities that the Americans offered to the Indians, some annual payments, relatively small, and they took millions of acres in the territory of Ohio. The final treaty was signed by 92 Indian chiefs, 27 of the Americans uh, signed their name as well, including a lieutenant, William Henry Harrison. 1795, a happy period after this war, this little war was over for, for Harrison as he went off to a trip to Kentucky. He's only 22 years old and he meets the young Anna Symes and the pair fare very quickly for each other. But there was one problem. Symes' father, Judge Joseph Symes, was not a fan of this match. He thought, I'm not going to entrust my daughter to this lowly army lieutenant. How is he going to possibly care for her in the manner in which she should be accustomed? And so he was trying to put a kibosh on the match. Well, William and uh, Anna just waited their time. As soon as Judge Sines went on a little business trip, they went off and eloped, so they're now married. When the judge came back, he confronted William Henry Harrison and said, how are you going to care for my daughter? And Harrison replied ever so simply, by my sword and my own right arm. And this was compelling enough for Judge Sines. He was okay now with the marriage, and in fact, they would become a close family going forward. In fact, Harrison then purchased about 160 acres from his father-in-law, beautiful territory right on the Ohio River in the area of North Bend, right near Cincinnati, an absolutely gorgeous tract where he could set up his farm and start uh, caring for his family. And that family started to come. They had their first child within a year and basically every year thereafter for another 10 years, ended up with the 10 children in a very robust Harrison household. Well, he had an assignment to do, and that was to go become the commander at Fort Washington, where he had been stationed previously, again, right near his home in Cincinnati. But there wasn't much to do. The Indian Wars were over. The, even the isolated uh, outbreaks were not very often, so there wasn't that much to do. And Harrison was thinking about leaving the service. He even wrote a letter to General Wayne kind of proposing that he may back away and go on to some other uh, ende endeavors. But Wayne wasn't hearing it. He wrote back and said, no, you need to stay in the Army for now. But that didn't last long because Harrison had a new job on the way, and this one was coming from the President of the United States. But that's the story for another day. And that is William Henry Harrison, plantation to medicine to arms, from the life of William Henry Harrison. For more Presidential Chronicles, check out my books on Amazon.com, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, I'm David Fisher, and this is Presidential Chronicles.